Um, so I, I think like right before everything hit, you know, like late 2019, the show was right here. And now it's like up here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Your line has been insane, um, you know, and, and fans have been waiting hours to meet you. Um, there was one that did not get a chance to meet you, and so I wanted to give him a chance really fast. Uh, obviously, social distancing, so we can't come all the way up. Uh, but I wanted to at least give him a chance to say hello to you, if that's okay. For sure, uh, let's do it. So, his name is? Michael. Michael. Michael, you can just come up right to the edge of the stage here, and that way you can give him a shout out. Hey, buddy, hey, how's it going? Oh, I'll get it real quick. Yeah, yeah nice to meet you. Here, you. Yeah. Are you right, so, uh, Michael, um, did you have a question that you wanted to ask him really fast? I, I put you on the spot. Sorry, I should have told you that before. Uh, but is there like something you want to tell him or, or anything? How are you going to the role of demon? Like, how are you going to promote Tango? So he wants to know how you got a new role. Yeah, that's a great question. So. Um, there's a lot to voice acting, and a lot of people have asked me like a bunch of different questions about like how I started doing this and, and whatnot. Um, really, uh, I'll, I'll take it back a little bit for you to give you all some history on this. But um, in, in 2014, so I have been acting for most of my life. I did a lot of on-camera work. Uh, when I was a kid, I was like six, seven years old, did some commercial work. I didn't like it at all because like who likes doing that stuff? It's so boring. and. I didn't know what I was doing. My mom kind of pushed me into it. And then I kind of discovered anime and video games, and uh, I wanted to be a voice actor. So I started taking voice acting classes. Um, not a whole lot happened for me right away. It took, it took a long time. And then uh, in 2014, I actually auditioned for a voice acting competition at, a, at an anime convention. And um, it was something where my friend kind of pushed me to line. She was like, oh yeah, you want to be a voice actor, right? Like, Let's get up and go into line and do it and, you know, like, perform a script in front of all these people. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. And um, so she kind of forced me to do it. And I did it. Uh, three weeks go by, and they give me a phone call saying, congratulations, you won our competition. Because they were, like, writing down notes and filming every single entry for the competition. So ever since then, I worked with a studio called Bang Zoom Entertainment. I did some additional voices. And, um, and they are actually the same studio that works on Demon Slayer as well. So, yeah, because I started doing that, it all kind of snowballed. I got auditions for Demon Slayer as well as One Punch Man there. And, uh, and yeah, I got the role. So, yeah. Uh, and I know I asked you this before the show, but who is your favorite Demon Slayer character? Well, first is Tango, and second is Goku. There you go. All right. Nice. Everyone, give him a round of applause. Good stories. And Goku is actually my favorite Hashira. And then uh, for me, Inosuke is my favorite. This is crazy. <laughs> Um, and so I was gonna, you know, he, he kind of already touched upon what um, I wanted to ask you was, I mean, you've been doing this since you were uh, really young, uh, and you haven't been doing this. I mean, well, I don't want to say you haven't been doing this very long, but you've you know, had yeah. so many amazing roles in such a short amount of time span. Has your life changed dramatically since then? Definitely. I mean, even right now, like, this is such a life-changing, mind-boggling experience, like, traveling all over the world. I have, I have, like, people, I have places, like, out of the country asking for me to, like, appear at their, their convention. You know, it's just insane. I don't know. And then I have a amazing reaction, like people are so positive on, on Twitter, I'm on Twitter, I'm on YouTube, and I don't know, it, it seems like it's all just been this big snowball effect. And when I got into this industry, I mean, I was really nervous and, and scared and kind of timid. You know, you, you sort of develop this. Uh, for me personally, like, I'm an introvert. I, I'm not like super outgoing and energetic, and I've never been like that. Um, but I kind of developed like that personality to, to have it because uh, in acting it's kind of important that you have that kind of like, uh, I don't know what it is exactly, like an outgoing factor of yourself when you go and meet casting people and you go and talk to like the producers, like you want to walk in and you want to look them in the eye and be like, hi, you know, my name's Zach, nice to meet you, like, and, you know, and have a whole conversation with them rather than just like, 
Hi. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm saying that that's how I really am, though. You know, like when I go home, I don't want to talk to anybody. I just want to like stay in bed and play video games and like watch Netflix and stuff. So, um, but yeah, it's it's been it's been a really crazy journey so far, and all of this has kind of been me like growing up through through doing this in the industry. Well, they absolutely love everything you've done, um, and they have a ton of questions, and I'm going to invite all of you to go ahead and send in your questions. All you have to do is go to Twitter and use the hashtag AskAnimeFiesta, or you can text the number 956-330-926242, excuse me, 6242. Did I get that number right? That's so cool. I feel like I'm on American Idol or something. <laughs> text that number. Um, just a couple of reminders, though. Uh, let's keep them PG. <laughs> and let's keep them with questions. Um, I know you have so many birthday shout-outs and stuff like that, uh, but let's keep them with, with the questions if we could, please. I greatly appreciate it. And we're going to throw the number up uh, just to be on the safe side because I might have messed up that number. Uh, oh, it's 2646. So 956-300-2646. And that's how you can text. All right. But I do already have a couple of questions that some people asked. Um, Someone, I know that you have done both Demon Slayer and um, One Punch Man, and this question is from Akasha, and she wants to know, which character out of those two uh, did you have the most fun voicing? Ooh, I mean, it's tough. So, it, they're two completely different shows. I think One Punch Man has this kind of, like, fun humor to it. I mean, Demon Slayer has moments like that, but I've never, I think working on Genos, he's very... He is a very like one set personality. I mean, he might change a little bit for you know some funny scenes and whatnot. But Demon Slayer, I feel like that show really like dives deep into like issues and problems, and it's so emotional. I'm saying it kind of like breaks through that layer of, of a character and it kind of gets personal, I guess. Um, oh, it's it's tough. I think I've had fun doing. Both, for, just for different reasons. I don't know, can I say that? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Vivian Bella actually came up with the question, how did you come up with the voice for Genos? Yes, there was a lot that went into this. Um, so, uh, I will tell you a little bit about the auditioning process for it. I auditioned for Genos for literally four times, which for anime is actually very unheard of. Like, usually you just send in an audition and they say yes or no, you've got the role. Um, for me, I, would, I kept going back into the studio and they were talking to the producers in Japan and they were relaying what we were doing here to them and they were like picking out, they're like, oh, we like how he did this, but we don't want him to do this. Um, it, it, was, it was a whole process, basically. So it wasn't just me, I, I, I wish like, you know, I, I didn't just decide the voice, but it was like all of us, a huge collective effort of like me, the English team, um, the producers from Japan, uh, and I think even the actual creator was involved in like casting me, which is nuts, right? Um, so they kept bringing me in and we kept adjusting the voice and they're like, you know, do we want it up here? No, we want it right here. Like we want it to be like in this tone and we want him to sound like this way of talking, everything, every single thing that he says is very calculated and enunciated, and um, because he's cyborg. So yeah, it's a lot to go into. <laughs> so um, uh, speaking of channels, they want to know. Um, obviously, you 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 have no control over the creative process of them creating new seasons. Um, but do you think? Well, uh, one of the questions that was sent in was, do you think we'll ever get a confirmation? for the next season of One Punch Man? And if so, what do you think, as a fan, um, would be in store for the character? Right. I think there's definitely manga material already, like, ready for the next season. Um, I don't know if, no one has told me anything about season three, to be honest with you. I've been asked so many questions. I'm like, yeah, it's like silence, radio silence. I haven't heard a single thing. But I, I always said that I would love to see uh, more of Genos's backstory. Maybe I'm biased because I play Genos, but uh, I would love to see more of that. Remember, he talked about like the cyborg, like you know, like his whole village destroyed and everything gone. And I, I don't know. I would love to. I think I would like to dive into that like tragic backstory to find more 
about who Genos is, like under the cyborg exterior, like who he is or was as just a regular person? Um, so, uh, this was actually from Aaron Benya. I, I hope I did this right. Do you think Tanjiro, so I guess we're going back to Demon Slayer, do you think Tanjiro will be successful in his missions to return his sister back into human? Uh, well, the, the, the anime, I mean, the manga, is, is the manga already done? Yeah. Oh, okay, so then no, we won't want to spoil anything. Uh, but I hope so. <laughs> but the, the, the relationship between the brother and sister, I mean, is, um, you know, so integral to the part of the, the, um, the anime itself. Um, did, did, did you have, was it difficult for you to kind of create that connection as well, I guess, because the character has that? Yeah, I don't know why. I, I play a lot of characters that have, like, sisters for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. It's always like my younger sister is something in, in a show. But the funniest thing is, is I'm actually an only child. I don't have any siblings. Um, I didn't want to bring it up. I was going to let you say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't have any siblings. I think it's it's a little difficult to really like imagine what it's like to have a sibling. I just hear from other some of my other friends growing up when I was younger. I would always ask them, Hey, what's it like having like having a sister? They're all like, Oh yeah, she steals all my toys. Okay. I'm like, I don't want one of those. When I was like, I've been 10, 10 years old or something, I'm like, yeah, I don't want any siblings. These are my toys. Um, but I just kind of, I've been asked a lot of questions about putting myself in the place of Tanjiro and, and like his family. I think, I think it's just like, I imagine my own family, my parents. I, I'm pretty close with my cousins too, because I have a lot of cousins. Um, and I just kind of imagine them in the place of like Nezuko and then the same with with my whole family. I mean, it's just crazy thinking about Demon Slayer. Like, you think back to the first episode, and I think maybe because it happens all so fast, you don't realize, like, the weight of what Tanjiro has on his shoulders, you know? He has he has this whole, like, weight from his entire family dying, and then, you know, the thing that killed his family is what his little sister turned into, and now he wants to save her, and it's just, I don't know, I can't imagine, like, the emotional pain that comes with that. And then I think that's what, again, I've, I've been saying, I think that's what uh, the culmination of, of events that happened throughout the first series and the movie, that's where that scene at the very end of the movie, if you've, if you've seen the movie, like, you know, with the screaming and after Akaza, I think that's where that came from. It's just like, kind of breaks a little bit, you know, he snaps out of it because he's just so, you know, up feels all those emotions, finally. You know, each character that he's met along the way, he's formed some type of connection. You know, he usually starts off kind of, well, who are you? And then really forms like an amazing connection with all these characters. Um, you get to go to, uh, well, not a lot of conventions, but you get to go to a bit of conventions. Have you been able to really, I know we had Mark Whitten with us yesterday, um, but really build that connection with them as well, with the voice actors? Totally, totally. I think um, somebody that I really connected with, and I said he knows Kate before, but uh, it's been Bryce Pappenbrook. Um, yeah, because Bryce Pappenbrook, he was he was like just um, he was just getting going really in anime. I think he he plays uh, Kiri Toe in Sword Art Online. Yeah, and so I knew him from that, and that was like right before I started voice acting. So I actually. The funniest thing ever, and I don't even think Bryce knows this, but we're, we're pretty close now. And um, I actually waited in his line, like to get his autograph at, at Anime Expo, like years ago, 20, 2014, 2015. I was like just kind of getting my feet into voiceover, um, and yeah, it's nuts. Now I get to work with him, and he's the coolest guy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, um, ever since the, the show didn't. It didn't take too long to kind of take off, it was just within the past couple of years. Um, was it already when the pandemic had already started that you got into this role, or was that um, afterwards? Oh, yeah, it was actually, it was before. Really? For, yeah, for Demon Slayer. Um, when was it? I think it was like, the first ten episodes of the show came out in Japan, and that is when we started working on the dub. So, yeah, it was, it was a little bit before, but then I remember I like got into the role, you could see the show kind of rising in popularity, and then episode 19 came around and just 
wrote the entire internet and everyone's talking like the animation, the music, like the voice acting, the, like everything's so beautiful. How is this possible? Like it set a whole new standard for what uh, what anime is. Were you surprised by the the I mean the mass advantage just at that point? Because I mean you were you were already getting recognized for One Punch Man, uh, but I mean it was just instantaneous with the dragons or demon slayer. I keep on with dragons. I want demon slayer. I wish I, I was like Dragon Ball. I wish right. I, go, I keep wanting to say Dragon Ball. I apologize. It's like I need another role that's big. <laughs> um, yeah, I I think it, it's always crazy seeing like what what gets popular and what kind of, where, where things go, like from us working on it, from a voice actor's point of view, because you have to keep in mind, we we don't have like, it's not like multi-millions of dollars uh, on a budget, we're not on a huge film set working at Warner Brothers or anything like that. Like we are in a small little studio in Burbank, in a mm -hmm. padded room, and um, yeah, I don't know, something cool I'd like to touch on is Genshin Impact, if anybody plays Genshin Impact. So that's, that's another thing I'd like to bring up in terms of popularity. When we worked on Genshin Impact, I was recording that show and I was working on the very first cutscene with like, e like where you choose Ether or the meme. And it was in black and white, it was like line art. And I had no idea what it was. They just said, yeah, it's like gonna be a mobile game or something. And I'm like, okay, cool, like just another job. Because a lot of the times we don't know what we're working on. We just kind of get thrown in there and you know, we auditioned for a role, and I didn't even have character art, and I'm like, wait, so who am I, who am I playing? Oh, like the guy with like, the braid and whatnot. Oh, okay. Like, I, I just didn't even know. Yeah. Um, and they said, oh yeah, you know, like, I think it'll do pretty well, and then it comes out on like every single platform, and just blows up, and it's been shocking. Do they invite you back to do more, more work for that? You know, I do some grunts here. And there. <laughs> yeah, I do all their I do all their live streams too, like promotional events. So it's been really cool. Um, so I, one of the other ones I want to talk about um, is Seven Deadly Sins, um, because that's another one. Uh, again, so many amazing characters that you do. But Arthur, I mean, um, Arthur is a fan favorite. People love Arthur. Yeah. Um, you know, what was it like working on that show? Um, and, and what do you expect from the future with it? I just remember, um, <laughs> I remember when I first started working on the show, it was a series where everybody that I knew in the voice acting, like the little voice acting world back in, when, when did the show first start? 2015, 2016, something like that. Uh, everybody else was already in it. They're like, oh yeah, are you, you here in the studio working on Seven Deadly? Like, no, no, I'm not. They're like, oh, okay. Oh, I thought you'd be in that already. I'm like, yeah, I, I wish. And, um, and then, you know, I had auditioned for some of the roles prior. Um, and I guess uh, the casting director thought my voice fit Arthur the most out of everybody. So uh, when Arthur came around, I got thrown in the booth and then I got, got to play Arthur. And in terms of what to expect, I mean, I think there's cool stuff coming. Leave it at that. <laughs> I, the keyword is think. Nothing has been officially announced. Disclaimer. So that's to me. <laughs> Netflix, I mean, has been uh, a huge proponent of it, making it really uh, as popular as it is now, um, which again rose through popularity, um, which is crazy. Um, but the, the character itself, I mean, it is has seen a I don't want to say a huge transformation, but a big change over the course of the series. Um, was it tough for you to have to kind of adjust to the character itself, or um, did you kind of go through it? Uh, well, no, I guess it was a little difficult to go through with, with the character, I guess. Yeah, I think so. Even me going through it with myself, like my own voice acting journey when I started doing all this. Um, yeah, I, I'm just happy, like, we don't always know like what kind of place the character is going to go to, and then sometimes with certain shows like the manga and anime are vastly different. Um, so I'm just happy to have a director there to kind of give me that guidance and show me what I need to do, where I need to take this character, and, and the director knowing what is going to happen throughout the course of the show. Have you gone back and, and seen some of your work from before and thought, oh, if I could have 
fix that a little bit better. Oh, I mean, a hundred percent. I do that all the time. Like, uh, there's there's so many things too, and even dubbing anime. Like, I'll do a take of something, and then they'll just keep it. And I'm like, wait, I could do a better one. And they're like, no, 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 let's move on. You have like a thousand lines. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I wish I could do more, but yeah, uh, I don't know. It's it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so some fans have already been uh, sending in questions, so we're going to start with Luna, Luna Kang? Is Luna Kang in here? Oh, there she is. All right, uh, wants to know, how have you been enjoying the Rio Grande Valley so far? It's been great. Like, I haven't done a lot here. Like, I've been inside at my table, <laughs> but um, I went out last night to go get tacos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, tacos. It's the best. Uh, what's been your, this one's, uh, same character, or same uh, person, what's been your favorite part of the convention? Well, you've been sitting down, you've been, yeah, we'll talk to the fans. Right, I mean, you're really just meeting everybody. Like, it's super cool. Again, I, like I said, I did not expect this kind of turnout or reaction. <laughs> like, especially here, I, like I've said, I've done, I've done some of the big, like, huge, huge cons, too. I've done, I've done, even, I said before, I've done, like, New York Comic Con, and, I will say the the reaction and the turnout here is is better than New York Comic Con. So I mean, you guys are awesome. Just ask a shout out. Uh, someone is asking, how was the experience trying to create the voice of Sid? Oh, C. C. The Fate Apocrypha. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that show. Oh wow, that takes me back. It's been a minute since we worked on that, but I got to work with the director that works on all of the Fade series. Uh, absolute legendary guy, his name's Tony Oliver. And we just kind of saw Sieg, and we, we started out having kind of like a very innocent tone, sort of like, it was a very weird experience when they explained it to me. They said, okay, let's kind of have it, ha have his personality be that of like a child. But don't make him sound like a baby, but you know, just, Make him sound very kind of ignorant, like he doesn't know much about the world or things or people or, or understand social interactions or get any of that stuff. And then we slowly kind of built that up. And with that, I think we built the voice. Uh, so someone's asking, because um, right before this was a really good one, which was how do you get ready for emotional scenes? Because obviously you have a lot of emotions you have to go through with Demon Slayer. Um, and has it ever caused you to cry in the booth? Yeah, um, it's, it's very interesting because, so when we voice act, if you guys don't know this, but we actually don't get the script ahead of time. And we never know exactly what scenes we're gonna be doing before we jump in the booth. So I, I've jumped in the booth plenty of times and I'm like, hey, good morning, how's it going? And they're like, oh yeah, your character dies. He's like really sad. Like, okay. So <laughs> I think it's really a lot of improv. Sometimes we're lucky enough to know like what we're working on that day and what's gonna be coming, so. <laughs> um, but I, I do think it takes a minute. Like, I, I don't know, I've never felt like I've been able to just flip the emotional switch and go to that place instantly. It takes me a good minute to just like think about it. I'm, and I'm mostly just thinking about how I'm feeling and like whatnot. Oh my gosh, you guys look so good. That's awesome. A lot of the cosplay has been amazing that we've seen come Seriously, in. Seriously, yeah. Um, and, and fans are, are really excited to see you. And in fact, someone in the audience asked, what is the sweetest thing a fan has done for you? The sweetest thing? Wow. Um, I think the coolest thing for me is getting like hand drawn like gifts and stuff. And those are one of the kind, you know what I mean? Oh, this is so cool. Like, what the heck? The sweetest thing. There have been so there have been so many good moments like, already at this con and other cons. Um, somebody from the staff to because I don't have the Tanjiro pop figures. I don't even have one, except for yesterday, um, someone from the staff actually came and he bought me one. Really? He gave me one, yeah, super, super nice of them. I know those things are like really hard to get, so they're like pricey and whatnot. I'm like, oh my God, you didn't have to do this. Like, seriously. Well, now if this goes on the internet, all you're gonna get is pops. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay, you don't have to get pops. Uh, someone had asked, um, what is your favorite? 
What is your favorite anime that is not Demon Slayer? Yeah, I said this yesterday too, yeah. but it's uh, it's funny, and maybe it's not what you would expect. Um, that's Shigatsu wa Kimi no Uso, it's your line April. The, you know, the yeah. it's, and the reason why is because I'm actually a pianist. I play piano for <laughs> Yes! <laughs> I love piano too. Um, I played it for pretty much all of my life. So looking at the recitals, and I did I did piano recitals when I was younger. Really, and all that. It's funny. I think that's what actually helped me like, do timing in voiceover, like mm. match the timing to the class. Because when I first when I took my first ever like anime voice acting class and dubbing, my teacher was my teacher said to my parents. I was just like 14 at the time. Uh, my teacher said to my parents, "Wow, your son has like really good timing." I don't know, he's, he's just really good at the timing. It's just because I guess I can kind of like hear it or something. Like I sense it from playing piano and having to get the notes perfect. My teacher was very strict, so um, yeah, if I was just like, you know, half a beat off, she would always say, no, we can't do that. Do that. <laughs> so it really helped you. Um, someone asked, and I know we, we answered this yesterday, but we'll, we'll ask it again. Um, what's your favorite line for Tanjiro? For those who didn't get to come to the Demon Slayer Yeah, it's uh... I'm <laughs> water breathing, thick form, blessed rain after the drought. So, that's my favorite. <laughs> you think it, it could be like Kino Kamikagura, but I think that that scene was just different emotionally, and that's like one of the few lines he doesn't really scream, is a very like peaceful killing. And I think that line kind of represents Tanjiro's whole personality. So, um, a couple of people have been asking this, um, but other than, than One Punch Man and Demon Slayer, what have been some of your other favorite roles that you've been able to do um, uh, in your career? Some of my other favorite roles I played. <laughs> um, the reason why this role is so near and dear to my heart, it's because it was my first ever big anime role. I was like 16, I think, when I worked on this. Um, oh, that's so cute. Here's your pizza! <laughs> well, actually, well, she can't talk. She would just probably like, girl. <laughs> oh, right on. That was so cool. Um, it's, it was Slain Troyard from Alt Noah Zero. People probably haven't seen that one, but it's, yeah, that's that's an old show, but it was so cool because it was my first ever lead in anime. I worked alongside uh, Max Middleman and Erica Harlicker, and we all played the leads, and yeah. Uh, as voice actors, I've, I've talked to a good amount of voice actors, um, there's some, like that one, there's very obscure animes that, <laughs> that you have voiced. Um, can you remember some of the more obscure ones that you've done? I don't know if it's... Completely obscure, uh, but I, I did an anime called Skip Beat. If anybody's ever seen Skip Beat? Yeah, Skip Beat was really cool. I played, um, I played young Ren, I believe. So I was like the younger version of Ren, and I did that also when I was around like 16, 17. So, mm. yeah. uh, someone said, How is it voicing espresso? Espresso cookie. Oh, it's so cool. Yeah. I, I actually just started playing Cookie Run Kingdom on my phone like three days ago. <laughs> oh, that's, that's so bad. <laughs> um, but it's been great, you know. I, I love working with Dev Sisters and the entire team has been super cool and generous. They've already given me like free codes and stuff to pull for cookies. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's really fun. So another um, fan, or another audience member had asked, what advice would Tanjiro give to the audience right now if he was able to talk to them? What is he giving them advice on? I don't know, that's a good question. Who asked that question? Anyone? No? Not going to raise your hand? They got nervous. I, I oh, think way back there. I Just guess way back there. Given All right. his, like, so what's the situation? Given his mindset, like if we were in a in a situation where we were fighting something, okay. where oh. if we were in a situation where we're fighting something, and and possibly we couldn't win and we had to like overcome it, what would he say to us? Yeah, I think I think Tanjiro is the kind of character 
believe that's even one of his lines. Uh, like, don't stop, keep fighting. And that was specifically directed towards Nezuko. Happy, so sad. Um, <laughs> that fairy tale. Um, I think I think that was that line was specifically directed just for Nezuko because he's like, no matter what, I'm gonna keep fighting. Like, I'm, I have to win. Like, I, I can't let it end like this. And it's solely for Nezuko. It's not really for himself. He's not a very he's not a very selfish character. So he's always fighting for other people. I think um, that's what he would say. It's no matter what your struggle is or whatever you're doing in life, like, just keep fighting, fighting for yourself. And if he's friends with you, he'll fight for you too. Um, so someone had actually asked uh, yesterday, I didn't get a chance to ask her, so I just remembered, um, as you've been voicing the character, <laughs> oh, that's cute. Oh, it's the Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> As you've been voicing, the, the, uh, you know, the, the character and humans there, have you found yourself relating to the character in, in certain instances? Obviously, you don't have to relate with the fact that you're, you know, parents or anything like that, but I guess in the characteristics and uh, what's going on with him. Oh, for Tanjiro? Mm -hmm. I think so, in many ways. Um, well, not necessarily, I guess, because I think he has to do a lot of stuff on his own. He doesn't get to, he doesn't have that, uh, What's it called? <laughs> What's this picture? <laughs> Those are from the last oh, panel. They kind of stuck around. Right. That's them like crying and they're like fake. <laughs> yeah, those are those are <laughs> the wrong Tito Ballard. So they kind of they stuck around. Those are cute. Um, yeah, I think I think uh, it's tough to relate to him in some ways because he has to do everything by himself, and I have the privilege of like having my entire family and my parents and everyone always supporting me and backing me and believing in me. If I have a crazy idea and I go to my parents, they might kind of say, ah, I don't know. And then if I'm like, no, I think I can do it. They, they 100% always, they've always believed in me. So, um, I, but I think that's something that Tanjiro doesn't have anymore because yeah. his family's not there. Uh, but yeah, I think that's one, that's one part where it's hard to, hard to relate. Has it, um, has, has the character being able to use a sword helped you want to use one as well? Or have you just stay away from it? You're like, no, not for me. <laughs> I think it'd be cool to learn. Uh, when I was younger, I used to do like, a lot of martial arts stuff, so I know how to, like, I can use nunchucks, I can use, uh, I can spit a bow and do all, do some bow forms. Um, I did, like, martial arts competitions when I was younger, but I ha don't really have any experience with swords, but maybe I should get one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we are running out of time, um, and I know the fans would love to see you, love to meet you, um, but uh, obviously, you know, we have season two coming up, they've already announced it, it's coming up. He's a real um, character. Know, uh, we talked yesterday about how they haven't reached out to you just yet, uh, to talk to you about what's going on, and you can't spoil a lot of things, yeah. Yeah. Um, but are you excited, as someone who's been working on this, to go into season two? 100%. It's just wild right now with my schedule because I'm working on not only Demon Slayer, but like probably about 10 other video games. It's all happening in the next month. Mm -hmm. So it's crazy. I'm like, I hope, I hope everything can be scheduled out, right? Because <laughs> like working on everything all at once is just like emotionally and physically, it's very draining trying to like put your soul into every single one of these characters and then trying to have everything perfect but yeah i'm super excited for the second season i'm sure you all are as well we get those movie train uh like recap episodes and then i think in about a month or a month and a half from now we'll, season two will be out so yeah look forward to it it's gonna be awesome so I don't get to walk your line, so I'm going to ask you my own question, because you said you were a gamer. Yeah. I'm a gamer. Uh, I want to know what game you're playing right now. What game am I playing? Yeah, what game, <laughs> what game are you like addicted to right now? I don't know if it'll be very... Well, of course I play like Genshin Impact, up on yeah. But I will tell you, uh, a lot of people don't know this. I actually, I was born, I, was, I want to say born and raised, but I was raised playing Halo. So, yeah. I used to compete 
semi-professionally. I, when I was 12 years old, I actually won like a Halo Xbox. Um, really? From like playing in tournaments and stuff, so I was like very serious about it. And I'm super excited for Halo Infinite. I've been trying to get one of those uh, Xbox Series X, like the Halo Infinite Edition, but the freaking scalpers, man! <laughs> get them out of here! <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, but I just want to get one of those. Like, just to have it. Jared, like, 333! I've actually met the voice of Master Chief, Steve Dillon. Really? Yeah, I was I was like 16 when I met him. It was my first ever convention I went to, and me and my buddy walked up to him, and we're like shaking, like, because we were guests there too. But I'm like, oh my god, like, <laughs> can, can you keep, or like, can you, uh, hello there, sir? And I was gonna ask him to do the voice, but then he just talks to me. He's like, hey, how's it going? You know. Like, and I'm like, whoa, this guy he just like has like supernatural. Like, he literally sounds like Master Chief. Yeah, I love first-person shooters, so uh, I used to be very competitive with those. I'm pretty good with fighting games, but not not amazing, but yeah. So there you go, now you guys know what type of game he plays, and if you like to visit him, he's going to be at his booth. You, you Twitch, right? You, I'm on YouTube, yeah. YouTube's YouTube, YouTube, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm a YouTube streamer. If you want to come check me out, youtube.com slash airzach, A-I-R-Z-A-C-H. I'm on Instagram, my handle's is just my name, Zach Aguilar, and then I'm on Twitter also at AirZach. So yeah, do all that cool stuff. Well, make sure you guys follow him, guys. Give it up for one more time. Ooh. Thank you guys so much. I'll be at my group signing, or at my table signing for the rest of today, so hopefully I get a chance to meet every single one of you. I'm going to stay here as long as possible, um, so if I have not met you, please, I would love to meet you. Uh, don't leave just yet, uh, Zach. Uh, we have our official uh, videographer here yeah. who uh, would love to get you saying anime fiesta with everyone behind you, if that's okay. Yeah, that's so, uh, guys, if you guys want to stand up. Oh, oh, they're both shoes. All right, so he's gonna shout. All right, out of the way, fiesta, me. Get the microphone. Yeah. All right, you ready? Yeah. All right. Okay, here we go. So on the count of three, we're all gonna shout anime fiesta. You ready? One, two. Thank you so much. 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 Th